Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. A group of more than 500 scientists sent a declaration to the UN saying there's no climate emergency. Lead signatories included Dr. Gus Burkhut of the Netherlands and Dr. Fritz Verenhold of Germany. Both men, like many of the signatories, are highly respected scholars. But the mainstream media did not pick up this story. They were perhaps waiting for the climate feedback to vet the claims, and sure enough, Climate Feedback did. Climate Feedback is a self-appointed group of scientists interested in maintaining the climate catastrophe mantra because their grants and livelihoods rely on scaring the public. They call people with dissenting views deniers. I call them appliers, as in climate grant appliers funded by many of the green billionaire foundations who want to protect their vested interests in renewables, carbon pricing, and their ultimate goal, global cap and trade. They've invested billions in this, and all of this relies entirely on the carbon dioxide is the devil climate catastrophe myth. And no surprise, many mainstream media outlets are also financed by institutional investors and pension funds that are deeply invested in climate catastrophe products like wind and solar, electric vehicles, carbon offsets, and natural gas. Climate Feedback is certified as an accurate news vetting service by the Pointer Institute. To show people just how crazy and unreliable climate simulations are, we just released a new report called Misguided Math, Misinterpreted Science as a rebuttal to the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, where you will see how climate models wildly exaggerate temperature forecasts and how many climate authors rely on what's known as the RCP 8.5 scenario. That's the most catastrophic scenario out there. And most climate scientists who are not of the catastrophic view simply say that this should be tossed into the dustbin. It's so far from reality. The climate feedback scientists seem to think that science progresses like a herd of sheep. But in fact, the Responsible Conduct in Research document of the National Academy of Sciences states that science has progressed through a constructive marriage of hard-nosed skepticism and the questioning of the existing consensus. So climate feedback attempts to claim moral and scientific authority of groupthink and they even go so far as to say the EU climate declaration signatories are not climate scientists, even though most of the climate feedback critics are not climate scientists themselves. So who are they to criticize people with many decades of experience studying Earth's climate history in depth? Climate science only became an occupational designation in about 2005. So most of the signatories of the EU climate declaration were studying climate when their critics at climate feedback were still in diapers. The UN as a body is broke, out of money. It might have to cancel conferences. Maybe they will even have to cancel COP25. That would be a blessing because then we could look at the most constructive meeting of minds as the EU climate signatories suggest in 2020. If the UN can't handle its own budget based on simple math, why would anyone believe they have a grip on climate science, the most complex scientific concern of the world, which is based on challenging differential equations and millions of variables? Please read this common sense interview with Dr. Varenholt and consider that maybe scientists with dissenting views on climate, but common sense and compassion for taxpayers and society's most vulnerable, Maybe these should be the people in charge of climate change. Dr. Varenholt and his colleagues advocate that little girls and boys should not spend sleepless nights thinking the world will burst into flames, and that ordinary people should not be beholding to green crony capitalists for their necessary fuel and energy needs, and that no one should live in fear of daily headlines. Earth is our garden. We are the gardeners. We should not fight, but learn to work the fields together and be grateful for our natural wonders and not live in fear of them. We were given the brains to solve problems and find solutions. So to tell the truth, that's the truth. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. <laughs>